Hi everyone, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Shift Event by Commvault and it's happening in New York. I'm super excited to be here with Darren, who's the field CTO at uh, Commvault. Darren, welcome to the Robert Show. Thank you for having me. Uh, great announcements today. I am very curious to learn more about and share it with my audience as well. Uh, but to just start with, uh, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you do at Commvault. Yeah, absolutely. So again, I'm Darren Thompson. I'm the field CTO, right. the Chief Technology Officer for Europe, Middle East and Africa. So I spend most of my time on the road, <laughs> uh, most of my time with our customers and our partners, solving some of today's biggest cyber resilience challenges. So obviously I work for Commvault, so I'm helping people to adopt innovative technology. Yep. Uh, but myself, I have a particular focus on strategy, yep. uh, in particular security strategy. So I typically work at the board level, helping to define process, and governance strategies, and really just changing points of view with regards to how we should be protecting our companies. Fantastic. Uh, Darren, you all made some fantastic announcements today, so I'm kind of curious to get into it. One thing that I've heard is unity. Uh, I'm kind of uh, curious to first unpack that yep. and then get into more around governance, AI, uh, cyber resiliency, recovery plan, right. and much more. So let's yeah. get uh, into Unity first and then talk a little bit more about others. Yeah, okay, so, so Unity, I think, is, is the right place to start yep. because really it's the umbrella to everything else, to the yes. rest of the announcements and, yep. and really everything we're doing at Commvault. Yep. So, so Unity represents, first of all, the representation of a single pane of glass to do all of the, th the things we do for people at Commvault across all of their data sets, all of their applications, and all of their types, right? right. So data centers, cloud, hybrid, etc. So we want to unify the way people manage and protect their data. Uh, and then within that, if we go one level down from there, it is also about bringing three disciplines together. Mm -hmm. The first discipline you would expect from us is protection. Protection, for Protecting sure. Protecting our data. Yep. Uh, very, very importantly as well, integrated within that, you know, kind of recovery, right? right? So recovering data as well. The other two are identity protection. So making sure that the identities that we rely on so heavily in business are themselves protected. Yep. And the third is around data security. Yes. That's around classifying data, governing data, making sure that we understand the data in our organizations, and we understand how best to protect that data. Yeah, All data sure. is not built equal, you yeah. know, so we really need insight as to how to best leverage our data. And then I guess the third level is, you know, we're applying that to AI and with AI. So we're using AI to enable all of this, we're using AI in our own products to yep. drive data governance, uh, to look for malware, for example, with threat protection, right. to, to help put, um, you know, we're going to talk later about synthetic uh, recoveries, recovery. right? yep. all of that. So we're leveraging AI, but we're also protecting AI workloads. Yep. So the other part of Unity is we're extending our protection regime uh, in order to look after things like LLMs, the data sources for AI applications. So that's really Unity. Yeah, uh, thanks for sharing that and giving us an overview of uh, what Unity is. Uh, I saw in the press conference, but also at the keynote, uh, uh, about, you know, obviously the recovery plan. Yes. And the timelines. What we've been, you know, obviously hearing from CIOs, from enterprise leaders is the recovery plans can go from anywhere between 40 to 60 days. Mm -hmm. How are you all making that quick, but at the same time, faster in terms of uh, making sure that everything's recovered right. in time. Right. Uh, can you share a little bit about that? Certainly. Uh, and I won't start with product. We'll, we'll definitely talk about Commvault product. But 100%. The, the first thing we're doing with organizations in this area is we're educating people. We, there's a lot of, um, at board level in many, many organizations, there is misunderstanding with regards to what makes good cyber recovery. Yep. We've come from an industry that traditionally has thought about disaster recovery. So what would we do in the event of a disaster? So, you know, a, a data center catches fire, for example, or our staff can't get to work or something like that. That was disaster recovery. That's right. still really important. Those things can still happen. But a disaster recovery plan does not help in a ransomware scenario, for example, because mm. it doesn't really think about the cleanliness of data. Yeah, it exactly. thinks about availability of sure. data. Sure. So we start there. We start with education. We're educating our customers. We're working in partnership with them, again, at a senior level Very to important. change perception here. Yeah. So then we get to what does a good cyber recovery plan look like? Exactly. Uh, and a very impo important constituent part of that is finding our clean data. So in the worst case scenario, we've been breached. Let's say it's ransomware. My business is down. My data is encrypted. 
all I really care about at this point is not who did it or even perhaps what happened. It's how quickly can I get back. Exactly. Now, in disaster recovery land, we'd just get back quickly and then we'd reinfect ourselves. 100%. Right? right? What, what we're talking about is meantime to clean recovery. How can we get that clean, make sure we're using clean data mm. at the point where we recover the business? That's hard. Yeah. And you mentioned 40, 60, sometimes 80 day 80 recovery days. time. Yeah. A lot of that time, a big percentage, 20, 30, sometimes 40% of that time is spent looking for that clean data. Mm. In a, it traditionally very, very hard. Imagine a business where we have data in the cloud, we have data on-prem, we have data in AS 400s, we have data in applications yep, from yep. Oracle through to salesforce.com. You know, again, cloud and on-prem. Yep. How on earth do we put all of that together and work out for ourselves, where is the clean data? How do I bring back my business cleanly? Yep. Now, there's a, there's a conversation to, had, to be had there around concepts. One is what we call MVC, Minimal Viable Company. company you right. can't do all of this at once, right? <laughs> so you have to decide in your cyber recovery plan what's most important to your business. Once that's defined, that's what you're gonna try and bring back. Yep. Then, then you can start bringing technology to the party, and that's really what we've been announcing partly this week. So syn synthetic recovery mm. uh, is something you heard us announce. Exactly. Uh, synthetic recovery is the application of AI and threat detection as well as anomaly detection so that the Convolt system can work out for you how to yep. synthesize a clean recovery point. So, so traditionally what we've done is we've kind of said, well, we got hacked on Tuesday, let's go to Monday's backup and hope that's okay. And very often it's not and we no. reinfect sure. ourselves, sure. okay? The next evolution would be where we look, we don't just want to go back to Monday, we want to look for the clean recovery points manually and we want to bring those back ourselves. Yep. We're taking that a level further, we're allowing a Convolt system via machine learning and AI to synthesize a recovery point that is guaranteed to be clean. Mm. So now we bring back the very, very latest data that's clean back into our business in a very, very timely fashion. Yeah. That's going to have a very profound impact on those recovery schedules and that, that 60, 70, 80 day, uh, you know, typical timeline that you were mentioning earlier. Yeah, I love it. I love uh, how you all are planning and making sure where the data is protected, right. but at the same time, we have the clean data in place, Absolutely. which will help us recover faster. And that's one of the biggest concern for all the CIOs and enterprise leaders out yeah. there. So th thanks for sharing that. Also, quick follow up around that uh, is, uh, I know you talk to a lot of finance uh, people, also the healthcare uh, companies. I'm kind of curious to know any use case that comes to your mind in uh, anything that you would like to share with our audience around this uh, uh, recovery plan, but also uh, the cloud native protection, right? Yeah, right. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Let me, let's start with recovery plan. So yeah. I, I've been traveling the world for two years talking about cyber recovery now yep. across finance, for yes. example, and other sectors as well. I speak to very few companies that have even made that distinction between disaster recovery and cyber recovery. Oh, wow. So there's risk number one. Yeah, and, exactly. that, and that has nothing to do with technology. That's an education problem, right? So mm. I would say whatever sector you're in, you know, I could give you 200 use cases of people that <laughs> had a breach, they thought they had a plan, they may have even had great technology, but actually it was a disaster recovery plan. Oh. Uh, and so they end up reinfecting themselves. Yep. You know, guess what, the criminal knows you have a DR plan. The criminal knows that. Exactly. The criminal knows you have a backup system yep. and they'll do their best to you know, put malware into yep. that system 100%. as well. So, yeah. so that's number one. Going to cloud, cloud's an interesting one. So you know, most I'm a CISO by trade. Most CISOs okay. have been dragged to the cloud yep. you know, mm. because they want to they, they go to the cloud so that the business can be benefited, but they want to do that in a, in a risk averse way. Okay, they want to take a risk-based approach to something like cloud. Right. That has not happened in many, many cases because the cloud to the business is very exciting. Time to market metrics change quite fundamentally. Right. We can grow things really, really quickly. So it's very tempting. So what we've seen in cloud is a rush to the cloud and these huge cloud architectures built almost you know, outside of the governance of the business and now this massive risk yep. that exists in cloud and cloud data. Yep. Uh, and so a big another one of our announcements today was unifying cloud protection. Exactly. So just look, just do all of these things that we described under Unity, but do that for native cloud workloads. We see organizations today, you know, we're mentioning the amount of tools, they've got 10 or 15 or 20 separate cloud backup tools operating across the various, you know, hyperscalers, uh, etc. So we're bringing all of that together, again, one pane of glass, enabling you to protect both your cloud infrastructure and your cloud data and applications 
under the Commvault uh, platform. Love it. Uh, these are fantastic insights, uh, Darren. Uh, one more quick question that I had was also a little bit about the future, hmm. but at the same time also for the customers, for those who are watching, when is this going GA? When can, how this, uh, how the CISOs can actually start working on this? Yep. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that as yeah. well? Yeah. Well, look, one of the nice things about Commvault, I think, is we tend not to announce things until we're ready to go. So wow. everything you're hearing right That's now, this news. is this is going to roll out over the next quarter or two. So this is pretty much immediate. You know, we're running, okay, nice. everything you're hearing about, we're running betas with customers right now. Already. We have early adopter programs. So this is all ready to go. Yep. Uh, what to expect next from us? Well, expect us to double down on AI. Uh, expect that to happen in the next couple of quarters. Yep. Uh, for me, there are th we have three responsibilities in AI. Num number one is we need to leverage AI ourselves. You've heard already we're doing that. Yes. That's going to extend. We're going to. Okay, know, nice. we, yeah, we are becoming AI experts. You know, we are. We, we're very excited about what we can accomplish across identity, security, and protection, protection with AI. And so expect a lot of announcements there. Nice. Number two is we want to make sure that the data sets that AI leverage are well governed and well protected. That's our responsibility as well. So yep. you're going to see some announcements coming from us around, you know, uh, if you want to rely on an LLM and you know data workloads feeding into that LLM, we're going to make sure that data is good. Good. Uh, because that, that's kind of our job. And then overall, I guess, what we want to do is build confidence in use of AI. We don't want to slow people down, mm. uh, but we do want to make sure that this just comes under the same protection regime as all of the other things that we're doing. Identity exactly. and our traditional workloads, our cloud workloads. AI is just another workload. It needs exactly the same governance and risk posture as everything else. And so that's where our focus is going to be. I love it. I love how you've mentioned not only, uh, you know, obviously different steps in AI that we all are kind of looking at. And it kind of also helps the enterprise leaders where now they can be, uh, you know, obviously now they can be very easily thinking about AI implementation right. with all the protection in place, Absolutely. AI governance in place, data governance in place, and making sure that there's a good recovery plan. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah. these announcements are really great. Uh, so thanks for sharing and thanks for, no you problem. know, obviously chatting with us. We'll keep the conversation going. Uh, and uh, I know you have uh, a lot of travels going on. So I'm pretty sure uh, we'll be catching up in some other continent next time. I'm sure we will. But Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure chatting with you, Darren. Great to see you. Appreciate it. And thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today.